I know I can't tell you what god I'm killing, but I can tell you that maybe some like servitors of existing gods are gonna die and maybe The next question comes from Lao Crow. Do mindless undead have souls? Phrasma create uh Phrasma's create create oh wow. Oh Phrasma <laughs> creator says yes, uh, most deities act like they do, but actual mm-hmm. descriptions say that they don't and only operate via necromantic energies. The thing with undead, I actually spoke with James Jacobs about this as well earlier. Because I was a little like, what? what is the exact nature on, on stuff? So, undead, like a lich, for example, a very powerful undead, will disrupt the, the nature of a soul in that a lich will literally cage their soul into uh, something else and prevent themselves from reaching the afterlife and stuff like that. Uh, and all undead have some kind of weird connection to void and negative energy, like, the, the necromantic arts, as it were. Uh, but the nature of how it affects the soul can vary from from type of undead. So something like a lowly skeleton or a, you know, a zombie or something probably isn't outright trapping a whole soul, right? Uh, if anything, if you think about it, it's possible that there could be a cemetery full of like people who died 100 years ago and their souls have now been judged and their souls are perfectly fine. And then you dig up their bones and turn them into in the walking dead do their souls get trapped no they don't none, none of that happens but uh the um kind of i think i think Jake has kind of referred it to as like a residue of the soul will remain within that body forever right like the fact that a soul existed is is always known there like an imprint, and almost an imprint yeah uh the the fact that someone has to use void energy and necromantic arts to raise the skeleton is really the key thing to worry about. And for someone like Phrasma, that is just like, she's all the way up here. That's like the lowest thing of import on her list. She doesn't like it, but in terms of like who she cares about, there's a lot of other undead along the way that she's more worried about. Those are small potatoes, but she also doesn't have to like keep an eye on that particular thing at all times. He doesn't have to be on the lookout for every single skeleton race because she has clerics and priests who work on her behalf that are maybe keeping an eye out in their town and notice that someone's been digging up the bones in the local cemetery. Let's investigate that. Oh, we found this guy and he's a necromancer and creating a skeleton and maybe using just one skeleton to serve as his servant and bring him lunch every day, right? But like he still underwent this process and who knows where that could lead. At the very least, it's likely impossible that whoever that person was was cool with someone else coming by and digging up their body and turning it into a skeleton. There's a whole lot of other problems with it. Let's maybe try to put a stop to this guy and and see what's going on and destroy this undead. So the original question, do mindless undead have souls? No, most likely not, except in like very particular circumstances when you want to tell an interesting story, right? Uh, But that doesn't mean that the ethics and the morality involved with creating a, a a lowly zombie are something to keep an eye out for and that there won't be repercussions with that and that there won't be people out there and other gods who might decide, hey, I didn't like that you did that. And when the time comes to judge your soul and Phrasma realizes, oh, well, you raised a skeleton once, I might keep that in you know the, the bad column, mark that when I determine where you're going in the afterlife and stuff. Uh, and, Maybe your first skeleton is also your first step towards deciding, hey, this undead stuff is pretty cool. I want to be a lich. And then then you get into big problems, right? But uh, a skeleton or a zombie probably doesn't have a soul in it. Most, like 99.9% of the time won't have a soul in it. But it's still problematic in its own ways. I, I will also say just because I just read all of the Phrasma mm-hmm. lore from God and Magic, um, it is actually differentiated in in the book that creating undead and capturing souls or 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 messing with souls are two different things mm-hmm. and so it, you don't have to create undead to capture a soul exactly and so like the idea of creating a mindless undead um doesn't necessarily mean that that's a soul or it has a soul because like it, it even kind of differentiates that yeah. with phrasma and we updated uh one of our spells recently in the remaster to summon undead so you can 
have like a skeleton that shows up to fight for you, but it's not actually raising one from an a existing corpse. You just use magic to create a facsimile of a skeleton to go fight for you because you think skeletons are cool or whatever. But that's generally fine. And maybe for Ezra will be like, I don't know if I like your vibe, but for them, that's not a, like an evil thing to do either. Okay, so if my skeleton has a little bit of soul residue on it. <laughs> Will soap and water do the trick, or do I have to break mm. out the azoprep alcohol? You have to, uh, Barkeep's friend is the one for that. Mm. Uh, of course. These are the important tips uh, that you can get uh, by interviewing the Biso Creative Director. Uh, I will. I, I I do like that that differentiation in the rule that you were just talking about because um, in the campaign that I play at home, mm -hmm. one of the things that I have done is I, I have a player that uh, wants to like use necromantic magic, but is like like oh okay how how can we make this like not always necessary like a quote unquote evil thing right? And so what we kind of worked out is that. Um, they have a strong bond to their family and their ancestors. And so what they're doing is that when they're casting these spells, what they're doing is that they're actually, the process of casting them, they're actually asking for their grandparents, their great grandparents to give them the energy to come mm -hmm. down and they, 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 their ancestors arrive and are fighting with them alongside of them. So it's not necessarily like a, you know, oh, I'm just taking this random body and, 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 and lifting someone. It is, I am having my, you know, my family that is there to protect me, uh, come and, and, and assist me in this, you know? So I like the, the change because that, that kind of allows something like that. Yeah, for sure. Having Spoken robustly, shall we say, of the undead. Uh, permit me a transition, perhaps, to the dead. Uh, mm -hmm. And in so doing, this question uh, from the Martyr 781. Do you plan on ever expanding on the dead god and brother of Asmodeus, Eus? Hmm. I was talking about that guy earlier with James Jacobs, too. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Look at that. Um maybe a little bit uh in the future um i think you'll see the name maybe once or twice but don't expect like big expansions uh I, there are some characters i think like eridan um who their place in the setting is more in how they influence things in the past right so the story of his being hey he's kind of the, the abrahamic god equivalent to the asmodeus's lucifer right kind of thing is an interesting dynamic the fact that he's dead it's an interesting dynamic uh there are things i would like to do with him but it might take quite a while to do that kind of stuff and uh frankly there's just a lot of other interesting stories he's one of those like not quite a footnote but a little like an elevated footnote there's a lot of information on him to a degree but doesn't really affect the day-to-day -day, as it were a pathfinder and maybe in the future I have written the name a couple of times in documents as of late. Maybe you'll see it, but the don't expect like a big revelation about, oh, it turns out that he's secretly alive or anything like that. Um, or like, oh, there's a cult that's doing stuff on his behalf or anything like that. Maybe you'll just see him in the background of like, ah, someone is talking about the history of the gods and they name drop him. But uh, not too much, but... He, he is fun. I think he's an interesting figure that maybe there's a lot of potential there. And if you would like to learn about the relationship of Asmodeus and Aeus, uh, check it, the, the thing in the corner, because it's going to link you to the video I did on Asmodeus, wherever that thing is. Um, <laughs> that, I, I didn't think about it until halfway through. I was like, oh, yeah, we could link to that video. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Promotional perfection. I know. No notes. It's, 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 it's like I've been doing it for my entire life. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, this next question, uh, I'm only uh, hesitant because I hate the name. Uh, Adam Ajaki? Adam Ajaki uh, mm -hmm. says, uh, if you can get an answer about Wormwood spirituality, I'd be giddy. The Weirwoods are interesting weirwoods are one of our construct ancestries I say ancestry intentionally um that were available in first edition they were basically made by an ancient civilization the aslanti people 
uh, as servants and stuff. And they have these kind of hearts made out of Aeon stones, those magical items that you can buy out of the GM core and they spin around your head and they do cool things. Um, and those power these things. And over time, the Aslanti Empire crumbled away. What happened to these weirwoods? Maybe they kind of stuck to their own devices and live among the ruins of Aslan, which you may have seen in the ruins of Aslan AP just a little bit. But a lot of them maybe also made their way westward toward the nation of our or the continent of Arcadia and found a way to flourish there and found a way to basically recreate the um the ritual as it were that created these aeon stones that gave a weirwood life and maybe even perfected it to give them not just animation but a whole soul right uh the the nature of that isn't something that i've kind of locked down in my brain quite yet but I, i've imagined it's a thing that um has a lot of like there's just like a lot of tradition that comes with bonding in between weirwoods like how do you have a weirwood kid you don't reproduce the way like a normal biological creature would maybe you undergo this process together right hey we work together and, and are together uh, performing this ritual and that in a way creates our offspring and that is now implanted via the soul that is born within this aeon heart and causes the the weirwood to grow uh, I I wish I could tell you more. I just just haven't nailed that down quite yet. But it is definitely a thing I'd like to explore uh, in the future, especially when we get to Arcadia, maybe in the coming years, and need some ancestries to uh, litter into that book as like, oh, here's new fun playable stuff. Speaking of weirwood dying and, and disappearing, uh, what's the god that you're killing? Oh, um, hmm. What about maybe like I know I can't tell you what god I'm killing, but I can tell you that maybe some like servitors of existing gods are gonna die, and maybe you get to be there when that happens. To what capacity? I don't know. I do know, but I'm not saying. But <laughs> uh, you know, maybe maybe there will be god servitors dying along the way. So like um, a, a herald of a god or other important figures that worship or serve a god might be uh dying along the way and uh you get to have front row seats uh in a sense of the, the term uh in the future well as long as there's good seating there is yes absolutely you surprisingly you get to you get the whole seat when you buy the ticket but you only need the edge <laughs> I perceive what you have done upon this occasion. <laughs> we have a question as well from Valinin, who mm -hmm. I can only presume is planning a road trip uh, because they'd like to know more about the mana wastes. Oh boy. Uh, we had a whole big old section about it in the Lost Omens Impossible Lands book. I don't know what specifically they're looking for, but I think the mana wastes are cool. Magic doesn't really work there. Uh, it's full of chaos magic. You might've known that term as wild magic before but we're going with chaos magic because suddenly cool. chaos it does sound cooler and suddenly the word chaos doesn't have all these implications about what it means with alignment and we can oh, use yeah. that in different ways um so it's full of chaos magic uh, a lot of gnolls or colos as we're calling them now living there um mutants and fun stuff i don't know go check out the lost omens impossible lands book read the chapter on the mana waste and then if you still want more come back next time i'm here i'm sure i'll be back again and then i'll tell you more about the mana waste if you have specific questions next question is going to come from andy bar 980 uh information on whether ancestries in player core 2 will be considered common now uh to the best of my knowledge the ones in player core 2 are uncommon uh i think we've talked about it i might talk with the team again to see if like i know I know I had my opinions about whether they should be uncommon or common. And I think I may be like on the fence suddenly in the last couple of days, like maybe I should go back and talk about this again. But for now, things are uncommon and yeah, just, just assume uncommon until we tell you otherwise. But in some cases, if you're playing, for example, organized play, kobolds are already common. So if you wanted to play a kobold in PFS, you're good for that. So don't worry about that. 
Do you find um, the common uncommon um, that system being more used for organized play than you see? Like, I mean, of course, you're not in every single person's room, right? And and seeing them play, but um, or are you? <laughs> are you in the walls? Um, do you find that a lot of people use the common uncommon as a like delineation of whether or not people can use them in game? I don't. I can't say for sure, right? Because sure, I yeah, you know wish I had survey data, but at least in my home game, I even have my players asking, hey, can I use this spell or use this magic item or whatever I found? And generally I'm like, oh yeah, that seems fine. Because a lot of them are uncommon because they showed up in an adventure path and not necessarily because the thematics are way off from what we're doing. It just happened to be in a back matter article somewhere. But I have even shut down like, no, we shouldn't do that. So I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people using it and we're glad that's happening and we are even using it ourselves if you look at a book like impossible lands or mongi experience we will tell you hey these ancestries that live here some of the you know for example mongi expanse mentions that gnomes are actually generally uncommon in that region even though in the core rule book or now player core they are a common ancestry because there's just fewer gnomes in the mongi expanse so we ourselves use that dial and, and turn it as needed for a given region to both explain things and, and you know help give the setting that extra bit of flavor and, and and immersion that you need but also to give examples to gms and players like maybe this is a thing you want to do if you come up with your home game or, or go to some part of the map that we haven't described yet maybe you want to decide that gnomes are uncommon or even rare so you know here's a way to do that but are a lot of people using it maybe but i don't have any evidence to show that like it's so hated that people wish it were gone or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are, are making use of it and I hope uh, it's working well for those people. See, it was more of a personal question because uh, whenever I'm running a game, I, I, mm -hmm. I, my rule is if it's printed by Paizo, then the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and the reason for that is, is because I like to like, if a player finds like the, a weird, rare, super random thing and, and they want to do it, I'm like, yeah, let's make this happen. Let's like, let's have some fun with this. Like, I want you to have the cool, weird thing, you know, yeah. like uh, the game Sam and I played in. I mean, we had a player that was a poppet, you know what I mean? Like, uh, well, if you say no to a poppet, people are just going to think you're a jerk. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Correct. It, it's just like, you know, um, there are just fun. There's just a lot of really fun stuff. And some of the rare um, like backgrounds um mm -hmm. are uh, i feel are i feel the rare backgrounds are the ones that i see the most out of like the rare section of people wanting to use like haunted and stuff like that like yeah. th those are just fun you know if you want to if you want to do but that's again that's that's to me uh and so i was just more curious if you knew if i was the weird one or if everyone else was uh You're the weird one i am the weird one um so this is the the last question um it came up a couple times but i also uh, am curious about it and i have been mm -hmm. told well if you're talking to Luis about uh, Lore, you have to ask him about Arcadia. So, uh, Arcadia, more win all? Yes. Uh, well, the thing I've been doing since I joined with Paizo is peppering Arcadia stuff in where I can, uh, just all over the place. And there's even been adventures that kind of dabble in Arcadia. When I think it's something that can't be taken lightly, right? I, I personally don't want to do Arcadia unless it can be done right. And that means I'm kind of a gatekeeper for it as a result in terms of like, if people want to like mention like, oh, here's this new monster, it lives in Arcadia. Great, that's fine. But in terms of like doing a whole Arcadia setting guide or whatever, that's the thing that one being in the Lost Omens line would, you know, have to go under my purview and creative director eyes and make sure that, 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 that that's good, right? But it's an important thing for me as a person, right? It's connected to cultures, some of which I'm related to, uh, that aren't really represented that often in, in fantasy and not in TTRPGs and just in general, right? The, how many Native American themed action games can you think of, right? Like how many um, Mesoamerican themed dating sims are there, right? Like it's just, there's a lot of other stuff happening that isn't touching on these things. And that means there's 
I, I feel a responsibility to make sure we do this as best as we can. We, we're not going to do it 100% perfect, even if there's literally no fault and there's no, like, no one gets offended or hurt or anything by it. Someone else will be like, yeah, but I would have done, you know, this Aztec theme Jaguar stuff a different way. That's not as cool as like this other stuff. Right. And like, you can't be, can't please hundred percent of the people hundred percent of the time, but at the very least, I would like to make sure we don't do wrong by anyone uh, as a result. And that means there's been a lot of thought that I've been putting into this and a lot of people I've had to talk to because I am just one person and I don't know the culture and of every history, the history of every culture and, and every people's and ev every bit of everything that's happened in the Americas. And it's not just the Americas. Arcadia has potential to do a lot of other stuff. One thing I name dropped in an adventure I wrote uh, a little while back is the uh, Dragonbound Archipelago which is a series of floating islands because there's not really floating islands anywhere in Galarian. Well, we can put them in Arcadia because Arcadia doesn't have anything technically. So we have a, a chance to do this. So there's a lot of stuff like what other fantasies and exciting things can we put in here? Does Dark Souls exist in Galarian? No, because Dark Souls wasn't a thing for three more years after Pathfinder came out, right? <laughs> we, no one was able to be inspired by Dark Souls until Dark Souls happened. And by that point, Galarian was kind of already a thing okay, where can we put Dark Souls land, right? Where can we put dragon land? Because people want a lot of dragon stuff. So there's a lot of things to, to think about and a lot of groundwork to be laid, which means when we do Arcadia, it's going to take a while to get there. But hopefully it means all that work in uh, leading up to it was worth it. Uh, as for what's in Arcadia, there's a lot of cool stuff. I, there's dragons. There's uh, a mountain range that's got a lot of, I, in my head, as I've imagined it, there's an enormous mountain range, and underneath it, there's just like, uh, like massive, kind of hive network of sorts for like ancestries that burrow underground and live there. So, like, you know, if if you are, uh, I don't know, <laughs> we have awakened animals, right? So, if you're like badger people, right, you might live there, or like mole people, or whatever, and live among this vast network that is kind of woven through these mountain ranges. There's uh, kind of like more uh celtic stuff here and there there's weird uh viking stuff there's uh pacific islander inspired stuff right there's just a lot of like different things that can come in here and be exciting fantasies uh that just happen to all live right next to each other because that's what we did in the inner sea we put ancient egypt right next to right land of the divs and evil things that you know right next to or right across the sea from like knights in shining armor they can just be all stuff like that the way there is kind of in the real world so we'll be looking at a lot of cool stuff in history and culture and and obviously folklore to draw upon it's just going to take a while for all of that to percolate uh and and come out nicely and uh make that all happen but it is definitely something at this point i'm creative director right who else <laughs> you can stop me right it's it's it will happen it's just a matter of all the all the stars aligning right and getting the right people to work on this and and all this other stuff but hey is there any other stuff you wanted to know about arcadia i've just been talking about like <laughs> hey it's gonna happen someday your question was hey what's going on in arcadia uh so um so this question might i might edit out because i don't know what the best way to word it and it is a sensitive yeah. topic and so yeah. I, I don't i'm I don't, gonna ask it i'm gonna ask it to you and i may not mm -hmm. put it in just because okay. i might not word the question right right sure. um you're talking about uh arcadia and the fact that you know there are a lot of cultures that that's involved in stuff like that when creating um ancestries um do you do you work closely or or pay close attention to like bad actors when it comes to um people using uh ancestries as like uh racial uh epithets for for people um i don't right i it is a complicated question see <laughs> right? but it, it's ultimately if and this is just extending beyond ancestries is representing cultures and all this other stuff that we've been doing over the years and some of that is involved with bringing people from cultures that you're drawing upon as inspiration. Tian Sha had a lot of authors of Southeast Asian, East Asian descent that can draw upon their history and background and, and lived experiences for inspiration on this and stuff like that. But ultimately what it comes down to is if you're doing something genuinely in good faith, I think 
no matter what happens in the end, um, things will be okay. You might mess up. I'm liable to mess up, right? Like my representation of fantasy Mexico might not be exactly what someone else's representation of fantasy Mexico might be. And not just because like, Oh, that's weird. Why is Mexico got like, why is Mexico basically Wakanda with magic plants instead of like, uh, 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 with vibranium, right? Um, it might just be like, Oh, I grew up in a different part of Mexico and I don't feel represented. Right. And I didn't grow up in Mexico personally. I just know what my parents know, but like, Every lens is different, and that might suggest uh, a different way to, to take on things. But if you're being genuine, if you have good faith, if you're actively doing so without the intent to harm anyone, you might mess up and feel bad and be called out, and that's going to happen, and it's happened to us, and it probably will continue happening to us in the future, right? We're never going to be 100% perfect all of the way, but we can listen, we can apologize, mm -hmm. and we can figure out either what needs to be fixed in the future what needs to be immediately revoked or, or changed right now, or just um, the kind of things that, the kind of steps we can take going forward to avoid those kind of problems, right? They, it might just be like a small problem, like, oh, it turns out that like the way that you represented this name is just a little off, right? Or a thing I've learned recently is that if you're wearing robes, you have to have one, um, one side cross over the other in a very particular way and show that because for most uh, for many cultures uh doing it one way is for people who are alive and the other way is meant for, mm. for people who, who who are dead right and it's like oh we, it's not even like it's gonna hurt anyone to we we showed the robe the wrong way it's just like that's not how you do it right the way that um it for most people you wear a watch on your left wrist right that's for for a lot of people that's more common and if it'd be and it wouldn't be wrong to have someone with it on the right wrist, but it just doesn't feel as natural for a lot of people. Or if someone decided sure. to put a, a wedding ring on like their index finger on the right hand, like that's not, you can do whatever you want. It's your ring, right? But like, it's not what we re commonly represent in our culture and what we typically see. So we're going to have even little things like that along the way. And it's not going to cause like suddenly this big kerfuffle that and so we had to like, recall all our books and it, you know realize that we've made the biggest mistake sure. of our lives we just be like oh well we'll keep an eye out for that and that's a thing we have learned in the past and our art directors are aware of that and keep an eye out for that because it's a thing that was brought up before not even necessarily as a problem but someone else happened and i'm like oh you guys know that you should do this oh great thank you now we know and we can fix it moving forward so be genuine about what you want and, and if ultimately in the same thing with like just RPGs and life as a whole. If you are trying to do a thing and not wanting to hurt anyone as part of the process and just want to do good by it, I think things will turn out well. So try to do that. You're going to mess up. We're going to mess up, whatever. Apologize, move forward and, and try to try to just um, improve when you do so going forward. You know, it would really improve this interview. Yeah. Telling us which god you're going to kill. Who is it? Oh boy. Um I don't I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. I'm sorry. I I may be creative director, but I think we need to hold on to that just a little bit more. And the fact that um No. I was gonna joke about like the fact that Abadar is gonna die. No. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we can't tell guy. anyone. Yeah, Cap I got capitalism. Yeah. Um <clears throat> now we're probably gonna either kill now here's my self quizzing myself about what do I know all 20 gods we're either going to kill Abadar or Asmodeus or Calistria or Caden Kalian or Desna or Aristil or Gorum or Gazre or Arori or Iomide or Lamashtu or Nethys or uh, Rovagog or Serenray or Shellen or Ergothoa Phrasma Zonkathon, Torag. Oh my gosh, who am I missing? She, don't ask me. <laughs> the you one you're going to kill. The one I'm going to kill, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The one I forgot is obviously the one I care least about, so they're going to die. Yeah, I'm over <laughs> here like bringing up the book to see which ones you missed. Uh... <laughs> uh, Norgorver is the one. Oh, he's, he's always secret. That's why I didn't remember. That's the one I missed. <laughs> um... One of those 20 seems like a good candidate for killing off. 
Yeah, I mean, if you say so, I mean, God. Um, well, if you don't want me to kill any of them off, I won't. I'll just look, backpedal look, everything. Look, <laughs> look, there are some fan favorites of mine that I mm -hmm. am worried about. Who do you want me to kill off, Jake? Who do I want you to kill off? Oh, yeah. uh, one of the good gods. F them. I, I like, you know. Just any good god. Yeah, kill feel like. Phrasma. That's fine. She's Phrasma's not good. Okay, let me rephrase that. Um, uh, not Phrasma. Sorry. Um, sorry. Saren Ray. That that's Saren Ray. Still Saren Ray. I, I just did the lore bites for Saren Ray and Phrasma <laughs> back to back, and so um, there's a lot of back and forth. No, I just the the god that I do not want to die. Uh, uh is is um, I'm pulling them up because I forgot their name. Ergothoa. No, uh, I don't want uh, I don't want Ergothoa to go. Because, okay. Uh, first of all, fan favorite. I mean, like the fan service that we did with the artwork, with the scythe mm -hmm. covering the top. You know, like how do you how do you get rid of that? You know, um, <laughs> how do you kill that which is already undead? Exactly. Um, and then the other god that I don't want you to kill is Ravnagug. Uh, and, that's just, uh, and that's just because uh, I am using that god in multiple home campaigns. Uh, <laughs> Well, if either Rovagag or Orgothoa end up dead, you can blame Jake because I wanted to spite him. Mm. <laughs> well, all right. I think maybe we need to we need to call this interview before any other gods are <laughs> imperiled. So let's say that does it for today. Luis, tell the good people where they can find you and possibly your network of Arcadian moles. Uh, <laughs> so I make things easy. You can go to luisloza.com for my personal website. And that has links to other places where I exist on the internet. So I don't have to read out a whole username and spell that out. It's luisloza.com and then go from there. Okay. I do have one last question. Yeah. What's the dragon on your shirt? Oh, this is the mirage dragon this is one of the arcane dragons if you looked at your gm core that's the one that's on the cover of gm core um this little bad boy is all about illusions um they are masters of illusion and use that to their benefit they're not i say they're not like that powerful of creatures but they're still dragons so they can tear you to shreds regardless <laughs> but in terms of compared to other dragons they they deal a little less damage and all of this stuff they're but they're really good at like sneaking up on you because their their uh, scales can adapt to coloration nearby for camouflage and they can sneak up on you and pounce on you their necks can like lunge forward and do a big bite they also have like those frills on the side of their head they can open those up to like fascinate people and, and like uh, catch your attention right oh, so they cool. can do a lot with illusion magic M makes you think of uh jurassic park-esque you know? yes yeah, yeah. But instead of when that opens up, instead of then suddenly acid being spit in your face, those open up and a bunch of sparkles happen and you're just like, whoa. And then the dragon eats you. Well, now I follow up question. Do they know I love them? I was about to say. Yeah. I was about to say, I found out which dragon Sam wants to play the most right there. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they absolutely know. They're very smart, uh, but they, they, you will never love them more than they love themselves. Even challenge accepted. Even more reason, Sam. <laughs> oh God. Oh, uh. Uh, Sam. Please end us before before we get too too far into. <laughs> Never. But if you enjoyed this episode, and if you want future dragon related content, give us a like and subscribe. Let us know which gods you've killed in the comments below. You can catch us on twitch.tv slash Althaven, where we stream RPG content. You can join our conversation on our Althaven Discord about dragons and or killing gods. And if you want to support this channel, you can do so on ko-fi.com slash Althaven. So simply walk into more lore. And until next time, keep it weird, internet. <laughs>